in this famous portrait, surely the essential Winston Churchill. In 1874 at Blenheim Palace, he was born. Most fittingly, because this great house is the seat of the Dukes of Marlborough, and he is the most illustrious descendant of the first Duke. A ground floor bedroom heard his first cries. He was intended for a soldier, but it was as a war correspondent that he won fame in the South African War. He was captured, but escaped. 25 pounds was the price the Boers offered for him, dead or alive. A little over 10 years later, he was a cabinet minister during the First World War. As First Lord, he saw to it that the Navy was mobilized when war broke out. As Minister of Munitions, he was in part responsible for the development of the tank. After victory, Winston was popular as he was not to be again until World War II. But he was nothing if not a car, and that didn't help politically in the 1920s. As he foretold, came the Second World War. We shall defend our island, and with the British Empire around us, we shall fight on, unconquerable, until the curse of Hitler is lifted from the brows of men. We are sure that in the end, all will be well. Coventry was the first provincial city to suffer what the Germans called an obliteration raid. Winston, now Premier, was wooing America. He crossed the ocean and on board Prince of Wales at his first meeting with President Roosevelt. Their friendship sealed the Nazi doom. Fruits of that meeting were gathered in the Western Desert, where Winston Churchill visited General Montgomery after the Battle of Alamein. American war material had helped, but it was Winston himself who inspired it all, and from general to private, the soldiers knew it. At last, the invasion of Europe, and this time it was on the Normandy beachhead that Winston met Mont. Paris was liberated from the Nazis, the architect of victory rode up the Champs-Élysées with de Gaulle. To a man with a sense of history and the ability to write it, what a day this was. Soon afterwards, complete victory, and Winston was on the balcony with the king and queen. To the astonishment of the world, the general election put Churchill out of office. He consoled himself painting, writing, leading the opposition, and in racing as an owner. His youngest daughter, Mary, was a mother, and the old warrior was again a grandfather. At the coronation, he made a splendid figure in the robes of the garter. He was prime minister again when he celebrated his 80th birthday. Congratulations pouring in from all over the world. Before he gave up the seals of office, he entertained the queen to dinner at number 10. He first entered Parliament more than 50 years earlier. Now he was saying goodbye to public life. In Middlesex Hospital, he was treated for a broken thigh. He was 87, but made a splendid recovery. Of late years, on his birthday, he would often come to the window. And now he is 90. The nation salutes the greatest living Englishman. Surely one of the greatest of all time.